All right, all right. I know that the comments are going to be pretty bad on this one. Elon Musk boys are fairly infamous in the internet community, but I want to talk about the topic that you've already seen from the title. What if we just didn't go to Mars? We have this strange obsession that, you know, Mars, the red planet, is going to be this uh, hope for humanity, that going to Mars is some kind of inevitable process that we have to go and that colonization of Mars is uh, an unambiguous good thing and that it needs to be done as soon as possible because humanity needs to have a second home in case, you know, something really bad happens. Even Stephen Hawking on his deathbed warned us that we have about a hundred years before Earth is basically done for and that we need to be an interplanetary species ASAP. Now I can already guess that there are people coming at me with their pitchforks and boring company flamethrowers, but hear me out, maybe we shouldn't be going to Mars right now. Maybe the resources that could be used in going to Mars could be used on other things. And there might be something quite troublesome about all these assumptions that we have to go to Mars, that we have to set up colonies, that could speak to, hmm, a uh, colonial past and this myopic view of seeing the universe, uh, Earth, people, Mars as simply resources to be extracted. And those assumptions may be good evidence that humanity is not really mature enough to inflict ourselves upon the universe quite yet. Hi, I'm a fat ass simp who will never reproduce, and this is Tristan Mom Shut Up. Now, Mars discourse is all over the place. I know, I am a huge fan of science fiction. I grew up with the idea that sending humans to Mars and colonizing the surface of Mars was just an inevitability, an unambiguous good, that nothing bad could possibly come of it. And now, in the 2020s, we're starting to come up on some, like, not-so-theoretical discussions about sending people to Mars. Elon Musk is quickly turning into one of the richest people on Earth, and he has some very set goals of sending humans to Mars in a very short time span. And NASA's current plan is to, in the 2030s, send the first manned mission to Mars. And shortly after the first manned mission to Mars happens, there's talk of setting up colonies right away. Now this could be just like in the 60s and 70s when we thought that there was going to be tons of colonies on the moon, but it seems that Elon Musk is dedicated to making that happen. And he has over a hundred billion dollars now, so he can probably do it. And it's Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and sort of the way that NASA has been changing that makes me really worry about how we're going to handle humans being on Mars and makes me think that we probably shouldn't unless some things change in a really big way. You know, there's a lot of questions about like who gets to go, who is in control of Mars, and the resources on Mars, how will they be extracted? How will they be distributed? All of these are things that must be considered before we even consider going. Not to mention using words like exploration, discovery, and colonization have some, hmm, ha <laughs> ha, ha, some, problems. So I think we should probably start with how challenging it will be to send people to Mars and then to have them come back safely, but also the challenges of having a permanent settlement on a planet so far away. First of all, Mars is a lot more inhospitable than people think it is. When it's in about its average temperature, it's about as cold as some of the coldest days in Antarctica, and it can get a lot colder than that. It's got a very thin, carbon dioxide atmosphere, and that has all sorts of problems associated with it. First of all, we can't breathe the air. Second of all, we can't even be exposed to the air because the pressure is so low that it'd be bad for us. And third, the reason why there isn't much of an atmosphere is because the magnetic core of the planet is basically frozen. On Earth, one of the things that keeps us alive and keeps life possible is the fact that the core of the Earth is a rotating iron magnet that creates a magnetic field around the planet. Not only does that keep the air in, so it keeps air from, you know, sort of just drifting off into space uh, slowly over time, but it also blocks radiation from the sun, which means that if we're gonna be living on the surface of Mars, we're gonna be exposed to about 100 times the amount of radiation of somebody living on Earth. And the solutions for how to protect against radiation are not perfect. You could put yourself in an EV suit and go out, but you're going to be exposed to lots of radiation while you're out on the surface. 
an amount that, you know, given how we do things with space in the past, you would have to have a lifetime total amount of radiation that you are able to be exposed to. And if that doesn't work out, you might have to deal with weird cancers and basically, you know, shrinking of your life expectancy. On top of that, the trip to and from Mars is going to take, at best, six months either way, which means that a full year of any trip will require six months living on a spaceship, which we haven't done yet. And in those six months, you'll be exposed to radiation as well. And we don't actually have a great way to protect ourselves against radiation on a spaceship yet. We have some ways, but it's enough that that one year trip could cause a significant health hazard and use up almost the entirety of your lifetime amount of radiation that you can use to be exposed in space, which means that once you get there, you wouldn't be able to go outside anyway. Some of the solutions for permanent colonization involve building a uh, colony inside of a cave, but that is a temporary solution at best. Uh, I don't think people want to go to Mars in order to be cave dwellers. And then, even then, they're still stuck with the problem of not being able to go outside and explore things. If you're not going to be able to go outside and explore things, then what's the point in going to Mars anyway? And despite what the Martian will tell you, you cannot plant anything in its soil. It's actually kind of funny. This was discovered around the exact time that the Martian came out in theaters. We found out that on Mars, the soil is filled with this sort of ionized salt, and it is very toxic to humans, which means that basically no plants could grow on there, and if they could, we could not eat them. So that means if we need to go to Mars, we have to bring our own soil, we're gonna have to bring our own water, because what we're learning is there's actually not that much water on Mars anymore because the no atmosphere thing. So that's gonna be a problem. Then, when we get there, we're gonna be blasted with radiation, and if we expose ourselves to too much of it uh, beyond a very small window, we're not gonna have enough radiation uh, total exposure for our lifetime to get back safely. Also, Mars has its own orbit, so Earth and Mars are only at their closest point once every two years, which means that if we wanted to send anything to Mars, it is going to have to go there during this window. This is the window where it only takes six months to get there. And once they get there, they're basically helpless for an entire year before they can take the six month trip back. So the shortest trip to Mars would be at least a two year mission, which the longest we've ever had an astronaut in space is about one year. And even so, that person probably has used up their entire lifetime's worth of radiation exposure. The person who did that basically can't go to space ever again. So if we were gonna send humans to Mars, even just to say that we went there, we would have to have everything they need to live there, uh, find a way to make a spaceship that can give them suitable radiation shielding for an entire year in interplanetary space. And then when they get there, they would have to have the resources, which includes like food for an entire year or soil and water in order to grow your own crops there for a full year. And then you'd have to find some way to escape the gravity well of Mars in order to come back. All of that is a huge challenge and is likely going to cost trillions of dollars. But Tristan, a theoretical person might say, the future of Mars is obviously going to be to terraform it. I've been watching The Expanse and they all know that they're going to turn Mars into a green planet somehow. I gotta tell you, it's looking less and less likely that that's going to happen with any technology we have today. Elon Musk has gone on the record to say that he wants to use thermonuclear weapons to sort of melt the poles of the planet, but even if he did that, more recent discoveries have shown that Mars probably doesn't have enough greenhouse gases and um, water in order to turn itself back into a lush planet like Earth. At least enough to make a atmosphere that's breathable. Another problem is that because the core is frozen, uh, unless we want to figure out some way to make huge electromagnets in order to, to kind of do like what we would do with an induction forge on the center of the planet, uh, which involves materials and amounts of energy that is incomprehensible. Um, any atmosphere made on Mars is just going to outgas over a long enough period of time just because the planet is geologically inactive. But even if we were able to send 
people to Mars, even if we even were able to figure out how to terraform the surface of another planet, a project larger than any human could possibly comprehend at this point. Should we? It's not fully ruled out that despite the fact that Mars is extremely inhospitable, something is alive there. We have been finding life in more and more inhospitable places. There's a possibility. Now, this is very early on. This was announced literally yesterday as I'm filming this, that there might be life in the atmosphere of Venus. And Mars has a lot of the components to have some form of life on it. And when Elon Musk shot his car into space as a sort of a way to show how big his prick is or whatever, it was unique in one really interesting aspect that made a lot of scientists and astronauts angry. It was one of the first objects launched into space that had not been sanitized, which means that that roadster with that little astronaut playing Rocket Man has bacteria on it. And if it were to land on Mars, luckily it looks like it missed, but if it was going to land on Mars as intended, we would be sending Terran bacteria to Mars. And if we're going to send people to Mars, unless we do a hell of a lot of work, it's going to be very hard to keep us from bringing our bacteria with us and inflicting that upon the potential biosphere of Mars. It'll be really hard to determine whether or not life exists or existed on Mars if all of a sudden the surface of the planet is going to start having colonies of microbes that we brought over from Earth. Because there are some microbes that could survive on the surface of Mars. We will be bringing life there whether we like it or not. If we do that, discovering, confirming whether there was life on Mars is basically uh, undoable or it'll be much more difficult. And if Mars does have life, then Mars has an ecosystem. And that means we have to consider the environmental effects of what we do by going there. If we start bringing like ourselves and microbes along, we could be doing irreparable damage to the ecosystem of Mars to the scale of the Columbian exchange on Earth. Something that would be permanent and last forever. There would be no way to ever go back after that. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not totally sure if like humanity is ready to not go to Mars if it has an ecosystem to preserve like a few bacteria because we see the universe as resources to be exploited, not as an environment to protect and to maintain and keep sustainable. So I worry about the concept of going to Mars, finding out it actually does have life, but finding out far too late and basically making the first extraterrestrial life we ever discover go extinct. Even Carl Sagan, the Mac daddy of we should do more space stuff, has said that if life is discovered on Mars, even if it's microbes, we should leave the planet to the Martians. It's not ours. And on top of that, even sending a manned mission to Mars doesn't seem like a very wise decision. We are making massive advancements in robotics and artificial intelligence that the Mars rover program and the long, long history that we have of sending things to Mars to do science might even be a better option than sending humans. Robots might actually be able to do autonomous science and be able to analyze things in a safer and more controlled way than any human could. Which means that really sending a human to go there just to say we went there might not be the smartest option if you are purely interested in going to Mars for the sake of advancing exploration and you know learning about the planet. There's also a problem of priorities. As I mentioned early in this video, Stephen Hawking said shortly before he died that Earth really needs to be on another planet because, you know, the common thing that goes around that we need that insurance system. We need at least two planets so that if one goes, the other one is uh, going to, you know, disappear. And this is a very common thing in our discussion. Like, you know, if we have two planets, then our chances increase greatly that, you know, if one is destroyed, then we've at least got a backup. Stephen Hawking was convinced that because of climate change and environmental destruction in general, that there's basically no hope for Earth and that we need to be finding a new world pronto before the Earth becomes basically uninhabitable. But there's a couple things that we need to consider before we just, you know, think about going out into space. Like, you know, if we don't fix the problems of Earth, if we don't fix the fact that we see the world as 
simply a place to be exploited for resources. If we don't find a way to evolve past the concept of infinite growth on a finite planet or a finite solar system or a finite universe, we're going to export these problems with us to new planets. You know, going to Mars to solve the problem of climate change doesn't solve the problem that caused climate change in the first place. And while we might not be able to create a runaway greenhouse effect on Mars, we're sure as hell going to find some new way to destroy the ecosystem there if we don't learn how to be responsible, sustainable people on our own planet, the one that we evolved on. I know I've talked about The Expanse a lot in this video, and I just want to say that I just finished reading Leviathan Wakes like an hour before I started filming this video, so that's why. But in The Expanse, they sort of show what happens if you have that problem that they've gone to space, that Mars has been settled and become a whole full-fledged society, that there's people living in the asteroid belt, and capitalism still exists, and people still treat each other like shit. And all it really results in is people having more and more larger weapons and more ability to wipe out the entire species anyway. And I'm not exactly sure I agree with Stephen Hawking. The billions, trillions of dollars that it'll take to go to Mars, develop the technology to go there and to settle and to build a colony that is self-sustaining could easily be redirected to be spent on, you know, building a infrastructure of renewable energy, uh, figuring out how to do that lab-grown meat so that we don't have to uh, have an entire meat industry that's choking the planet on uh, wastes of resources and water and climate change uh, creating chemicals that we could use it to change our energy grids and do the transformation of the way that we interact with the natural world in order to uh, keep our life on Earth sustainable. But the other argument that comes up when you're talking about the insurance policy is asteroids. And if we invested some of those billions and trillions of dollars to be better at detecting asteroids that are on an impact course with Earth and how to deal with that, that might be a worthwhile investment, more so than dumping it all into a rust ball that is millions and millions of kilometers away that does not have the resources to be a livable planet. And there's a ton of unforeseen circumstances that will come with living on Mars. Mars doesn't have Earth-like gravity, and spending any time in space, we're quickly learning how hyper-specialized humans are for specifically the parameters of the Earth. I'm sure I'm not the only person who has been following, you know, things that are going on with astronauts and stuff like that. And we're learning very damn quick that without Earth-like gravity and an Earth-like atmosphere and Earth-like everything, we immediately start falling apart. Like, just to give you an example, in microgravity, i.e. like the gravity you would have on the International Space Station, if you aren't constantly doing exercise, your bones deteriorate at an absolutely insane rate to the point where a, after about a year in space, it takes like months of physiotherapy in order to build up bone and muscle density again. And even like things that we didn't think about, like how um, it seems that your first month in space, you're basically stuffed up the whole time, and now we're finding out that your eyesight starts to go when you spend too much time in space. So trying to expand ourselves into like other planets or into like, you know, space habitats is going to be really hard because human biology was just not designed for it. And it'll take a very, very long time for our bodies to evolve and adapt to different climates and things like that. So maybe not something that we should be, you know, putting on the docket as a permanent solution to the insurance problem in the next two decades. It's also quite disturbing the way that we talk about Mars colonization. That's really not a word we should have positive associations with. And the second we start talking about colonizing Mars, red flags should be going off and we should start instantly interrogating why we want to do such a thing. When we talk about colonizing Mars, we are talking about Mars as if it belongs to us, which, you know, given that there might be an ecosystem, we might not be the rightful owners of. And that would mean that, you know, going to Mars and setting up settlements is akin to the same thing that we did to the indigenous people of the Americas, or, you know, the indigenous people of the whole world. Also, it basically speaks to using Mars as a sort of strip mining operation. Discussions of terraforming Mars rarely talk about the fact that by creating a livable Mars, even if that was possible, 
kind of means destroying Mars in general, as it was. And I don't know, do we really have the right to do that? Like, that means erasing its history and completely altering the physics and chemistry of the planet. And if humans go to Mars, we're going to do that, even if it's by accident. And if we do set up colonies in space and on Mars, there's going to be the question of who owns it, you know? NASA, for example, is becoming more and more reliant on public-private partnerships. If we are completely dependent on, say, SpaceX to go to Mars, and we send people there, does that colony belong to the United States or whoever, you know, set up the contract? Does it belong to Elon Musk and SpaceX? Or does it belong to the people who go there? That question's gonna have to be answered. And if it just belongs to Elon Musk, is there any jurisdiction? Is there any limits? If we were to go to the Elon Musk Mars colony, is there functionally no international law that can be followed? Especially if the only way to enforce it would be to go to space, and if we start relying more and more on private spaceflight, that there might not be a way to do that? Like, say, if we set up a Mars colony, and it's working great, and Elon Musk goes there and just rules it as a king, and the people there are being horribly mistreated, and there's just like open like, you know, lies and misinformation to try and trick people into going there in order to abuse their bodies to work them until they die. Kind of like what happened in a lot of early colonization techniques, you know, with like indentured servitude and stuff. Is there anything that Earth could do to stop that form of tyranny? And if not, then that is Mars. Mars just becomes Musktopia, which, you know, given the guy's Twitter account sounds like one of the worst possible ideas that we could ever have. And so colonizing Mars comes the big question, like, who gets to colonize Mars? Who owns Mars? Because um, that's going to be a big problem. Technically, by international law, there is the Outer Space Treaty, which basically says that nobody can own anything that's not on Earth. I imagine that's not going to last super long. But, like, we have a similar type of treaty with Antarctica. And why would we give Mars less credence than we give Antarctica? And it reeks of the sort of colonial mindset that these planets, that these lands, are places to go to, use, and abuse until it's used up, and then go on to another place. Which, you know, in the long span of human existence, like maintaining life on Earth, and, you know, maintaining our life in the solar system, which we are very unlikely to be able to get too far away from, then the problem of having insurance just becomes a bigger one. You know, if we have an entire solar system that we are using and abusing and there's no more places to go, there's no new frontiers, you know? We can't go faster than light, so any trip to even our closest star would take hundreds of thousands of years. Then we are just taking the problem of you know, not living sustainably and just exporting it to a bigger scale. And I don't know about you guys, but I would like to have a better long-term solution for the human species, which would involve more or less learning how to live sustainably on this planet before we figure out how to do so on alien planets that we have no concept of how to live on yet. So then how should we approach space? At this moment, we are facing multiple dilemmas as a species. We're not even fully aware of the role that our species plays on one planet. Before we can inflict ourselves on others, we should probably have a pretty good idea of what we're doing here. We are already scientifically developing things that will give us power and ability to change our material world in ways that we haven't really had great conversations about how to do ethically and responsibly. I mean, shit, we're not even 80 years into the invention of atomic weapons, and we have already used those to almost destroy ourselves multiple times. And I would think that before humans start to take our first steps out into the universe, that ideas like capitalism, colonialism, and the dichotomy between human and nature are things that we probably don't want to carry with us. To give you an example, 
What if we discovered two things about Mars? One, that it has microbial life, possibly the only other life that hadn't evolved on Earth in the entire solar system. And we find out that it's got tons of gold. I'll tell you what, the 1949 gold rush resulted in a mass genocide of human beings living there. Are we ready to say we can't strip mine all this gold because we need to protect some microbes? And until we can have a discussion like that, are we ready to go to Mars, to Venus, to Jupiter, to possibly Proxima Centauri? Now listen, I'm not like against space exploration. I'll be first in line to go out and, you know, see new worlds and new civilizations. You know, I am down for discovery and to observe the universe. And yeah, humans are going to have to leave Earth at some point, but we're not at the point where we need to quite yet. And I would rather we focused more on introspection, figure out how to live here ethically and responsibly as a species, you know, become that uh, tier one civilization in the Kardashev scale before we think about going to Mars and putting people there and then going to other celestial bodies. And so while I'm excited to have all of the sci-fi wonders of our future ahead of us, we should probably work on ourselves first. Thank you very much for watching. If this is your first time here and you want to see more videos every week, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. This is still a brand new channel and I would be much appreciated if you were to join us. Also, thank you to my patrons who are making this possible. If you want to join up, go to patreon.com slash stepbackhistory and uh, give us a little as a dollar a month. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you next time.